Hey everybody, and welcome to the smallest town in Canada, Dog River, Saskatchewan. I am your friendly neighborhood soda, joined as always by my good friend, the Hank to my soda. I'm kidding. Um, that's actually more of an insult now that I think about it. 50, how are you, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm hoping that reference will make sense eventually by the end of the show. Hank is a character in the show. Basically, I was referring to your <laughs> name, Nick, but then when I realized that, well, no, Hank is incredibly stupid and you're not. <laughs> so, But anyways, we are here to discuss my f personal favorite Canadian show of all time. Um, it is a sitcom that ran, it ran for five years in the early 2000s from 2000 and, was it 2004 to 2009, I believe? Um, it's only 105 episodes. Uh, it is a little TV show called Corner Gas. It basically takes place in a town called Dog River, Saskatchewan, um, which is actually based on a real town in Saskatchewan called Rulo. Mm -hmm. Um, and this set up until recently, you're actually able to go visit. They finally tore down the set because while well, the foundations were going. Um, basically it's just a 20 minute show. It's kind of like our Seinfeld in a way, like there is a connective thread throughout the episode, but really it's a show about nothing. It's just a show about just regular old prairie life in Canada. Um, oh, the Canadian show Seinfeld. basically is what it is. Canadian Seinfeld. So they went out when they went out on top. Well, so did Seinfeld, I guess. Um, yeah. but, uh, so, uh, Corner Gas was created by a, kid, a Canadian comic named Brett Butt. Basically, he would the way it came about was, what would my life have been like if I'd have stayed behind in my hometown? That's just basically all it was. So Brett uh, Brett Butt created the show, and he was also the main character. So I'm going to start going over the characters here. Brent Herbert Leroy is the comic book reading sarcastic proprietor of Corner Gas. He is almost always good natured, but has a tendency to fixate on minor details. He's a fan of adventure fiction, such as The Saint of New York and The Executioner. His favorite food is chili cheese dogs to the point where he can identify the individual agreement in the ingredients by taste. Brent is, quote-unquote, adept at many sports, such as curling, hockey, and softball. His favorite football teams are the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Minnesota Vikings. He and Hank have been best friends since childhood, and Brent often makes fun of him and name multiple instances of Hank's stupidity. Brent is said to be the hottest guy in Dog River, although other characters on the show acknowledge this as faint praise. <laughs> he is also the Dog River table hockey champion using a, quote, dump it into the corner style of play. It is implied that he and Lacey Burroughs have feelings for each other, although neither will admit or act upon them. At the end of the series, he went on to fulfill his dream of fly fishing in the Yukon while looking to wrestle a bear. He didn't find any bears, but he did see either a Sasquatch or an oddly shaped stump. It was revealed in Corner Gas, the movie, that he and Lacey entered a romantic relationship three years after the end of the series. Uh, I've actually been called I've actually been called a Brent before, and I'm like, you know what? No complaints here. Um, I've I've actually met the guy twice. Well, okay, met him once, really. Seen him twice. Um, years ago, uh, when I was living in Vancouver, he came out with a movie called No Clue. It was this is basically a, a Canadian finance um, spy movie. Um, and I actually got to go to a screening of it where he was doing a Q and a, but I had to leave just as the Q and a was starting. So as, as I was leaving, he came across me and I shook his hand. I'm like, dude, thank you very much for corner gas. <laughs> and, and, uh, about five years ago, he actually came into the stand up set here in my hometown. Very funny. Um, yeah, ov overall a, a good dude. One of my favorite uh, Twitter accounts is his hot Canucks account because he live tweets most of the games. Fucking hilarious. Uh, now we have Lacey Burroughs, played by Gabrielle Miller, who was also star of another Canadian uh, TV show called Robson Arms. That one is um, it is a drama series that takes place in a fictional apartment building in Vancouver. Um, but anyways, Lacey Burroughs took over the previously unnamed coffee shop in Dog River after her aunt's death and renamed it the Ruby in her honor. So basically she runs the restaurant that's right next door to the gas station. The cafe. The cafe, yeah. Yeah, Ruby's. Yeah. Um, originally from Toronto... She is perpetually trying to fit into small town life with mixed, often disastrous results. She's a terrible liar, quick to jump to conclusions, a poor winner, and thinks everybody has a crush on her and frequently exhibits insecurity and regret about the path her life has taken. She has also expressed frustration at being unable to find, quote, a stable guy to date in Dog River. She considers herself a sweetheart and secretly, believe, secretly believes that she alone of the town's women deserves the Women of Distinction Award, which she does eventually win. She's also very knowledgeable when it comes to hockey, coaching Dog River's hockey team, the Dog River River Dogs. Yep, that's their team. 
In season five, Taryn describes Lacey as, quote, too upbeat, overly fastidious, a little needy, same old Lacey. Her fashion sense trends towards the revealing. This was mocked in the episode Doc Small, in which she welcomes to Dog River Dr. Chris Garner, a doctor from an even smaller town, and she's shocked by Lacey's, quote, slutty top, which is actually one of her more conservative tops. After the series ends, she opened a second um, Ruby and Willigen, but the local inspectors quickly shut it down. A what? Uh, she tried to open up another Ruby and Willigen. What, what was, what's the spit? You'll see. Or... It's actually okay. pointless. Okay, I, th I thought that was something inappropriate. No, no, I actually, I will get to it. I will get to it. I was actually, I'm kind of hoping you would have come, you would have caught on to it a little later, but uh, no, there's actually a reason for it, and I will get to it later. Um, All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, next up, we have Hank. Hank is, Hank's the village idiot, basically, is the way to describe it. Yeah. Richard Henry, Hank, Yarbo. Um, actually, if you've ever seen the movie Just Friends with um, Ryan Reynolds, uh, there's actually quite a few corner gas actors in that movie, and he's one of them. He plays the best friend. All right. Um, Richard H Henry, Hank Yarbo, is Brent's perpetually unemployed best friend. He often hangs out at Corner Gas, talking to Brent, and constantly borrows money from other characters and rarely pays them back. Um, he has worked at a range of jobs, from census worker to crossing guard to city accountant, never being able to hold down or stay focused in one for too long. He expressed the goal of working as a rodeo clown. His mother lives in Saskatoon, and his favorite foods are great pop rocks and pickles, despite accidentally choking on the same pickle two times. <laughs> Hank is quite childish, doing such things as going to see an adventure movie designed for six-year-olds four times in one week. He's shown to have a lot of interest in the CFL, most notably the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Saskatchewan's football team. In a Christmas-themed episode, it is revealed that as a hockey fan, he likes the Vancouver Canucks. Yay! Yay! Despite his village idiot routine, Hank actually has experience in many physical and maintenance activities, including auto mechanics, gardening, knitting, woodworking, and plumbing, and making something of a jack of all trades. After the series, he continued to remain "quote unquote" awesomely unemployed. Oh, oh wrong picture. Wrong. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> um, any questions so far? Are these are all the characters. I'm giving this only so there's. There's one. How many? There's a few main characters that every episode focuses around. Either the A plot, B plot, or C plot. 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 You've got Brent and um, uh, Lacey who uh, run the Ruby and uh, and Quarter Gas. You've got the next person I'm about to talk to who is Brent's employee. You've also got Brent's parents and the two cops. Those are the main characters of the show. And Hank. And Hank. Yeah, of course. And Hank. And always Hank. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Wander Dollard, who is played by Nancy Robinson. Fun fact, Nancy Robinson and Brett Butt met on the set and married a few years later and are still happily married. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Wander Dollard is a quirky cashier at Corner Gas and the self-professed smartest person in town, which isn't, which isn't saying much. Yeah. Wanda, Wanda has a sardonic, caustic personality and enjoys lording her knowledge over others. She is the single mother of a six-year-old son, Tanner Vincent Dollard, who is seen on screen only briefly in the episode Oh Baby. It's implied, in the plier, it's implied mm -hmm. that Hank is Tanner's father. When Wanda is approached about this, she tries to laugh it off, but doesn't deny it outright. Tanner is portrayed as a living nightmare for prospective babysitters and as a handful for his own mother, doing things like putting peanut butter up her nose while she sleeps. Accused of being a know-it-all, Wanda is also one of the very few Dog River residents who has gone to university. She holds a uh, degree in linguistics with a minor in comparative religion, but took classes in many other subjects. Despite her extensive education, she considers her job at Cornegas a privilege. She is shown as having a case of mild agoraphobia in one episode, and like Hank and Brent, Wanda grew up in Dog River. At the end of the series, she pursued a PhD in theoretical physics, though she still works at Cornegas, albeit with a pay raise. Scorch pow. Whenever some yeah, she's 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 basically the smart ass of the group. All right. Uh now we're on to Brett's parents. Next first up we have Oscar Leroy. Oscar Leroy is Brent's grouchy, stubborn, occasionally senile, elderly stereotype father, the retired former owner and founder of Corner Gas. 
His all purpose word is jackass. During the course of the live action series, he says it 90 times. It's almost once an episode. It is also the series' final spoken word. Huh. He often demands that the Dog River police arrest anyone who annoys him. He frequently, belligerently points out to government workers, my taxes pay your salary. Exclaim, holy hell, on encountering new or surprising things. He rivals Hank in his brain capacity and ability to make mistakes, and the two are often shown scheming together. Often, likes to, uh, Oscar likes to show his handiwork around the house, but usually makes things worse when he tries to fix things. When Brett suggested selling corner gas to a huge company, Oscar replied, How dare you? How dare you keep the pump and go people waiting? Sell it. Sell it now. Showing he didn't love his old job. This, however, was only part of Hank's fantasy sequence that may not actually reflect Oscar's actual sentiment. Now, my one of my favorite TV mothers, Emma. Emma Leroy. Emily Roy is Brent's mother, the brains and muscle of the family. She and Oscar squabble, squabble constantly, and she usually ends up having to deal with the fallout from his actions, which she usually makes worse. Although he embarrasses and annoys her, she truly does love him. She also found, quote, letting go of Brent difficult and reacts badly when someone else appears to replace her in some aspect of his life. Her main hobbies are knitting, crocheting, and gardening, and she is active in many of the town's committees. She has also been shown to possess great strength, being able to hurl a cinder block at a skunk across the yard with little effort. Oof. And I actually saw that episode. Yep, that was definitely across the yard. <laughs> and other characters often seek her advice. She has a quick-tempered, cunning, domineering personality. After the end of the series, she remained married to Oscar despite doctor's orders. And unfortunately, the actress who played her, Janet Wright, has since passed away. Um, so they unfortunately have had to recast her in the animated series. Um, and she actually, to this date, remains the only cast member to have passed away. Oh. Which was very sad because I'm like, if I'm being all 100% honest, I'm, I'm not joking when I say that she is legit my favorite TV mom because she doesn't take shit from anybody. <laughs> and I mean, yep. who would argue against somebody who could hurl a cinder block that far? Not me. Yeah. All right, so now we're on to the final two main characters, the cops in the town. Oh, boy. First up, we have Sergeant Davis Quinton, played by Canadian actor Lauren Cardall. Sergeant Davis Quinton is Dog River's overly sensitive First Nation senior police officer. He has a habit of misspending the police budget, napping on the job, and making up the laws as he goes along, never <laughs> having never actually read the police manual. Due to the local... He with it. Sorry? He disagrees with it. No, he's just it, there's literally Dog River is so small and so devoid of crime. Like there's not like it, there's nothing to do. <laughs> like there's an episode in season one where he actually has to get written up on the job because he's just randomly firing his gun at a bunch of a um, bunch of squirrels that were causing ruckus. So that was a Doctor Who joke. Never mind. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so so sorry. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> See what I did there? See what I did there? I did. Due to the low crime rate in Dog River, he does not take his job very seriously. He is obsessed with Cosmopolitan Magazine, Retro TV, and classic cartoon shows, and is a science fiction aficionado. He believes that the original Battlestar Galactica may have really happened. His catchphrase I mean, is... There's no evidence to the contrary. That is true. You can't disprove the future. Yeah. His uh, his uh, catchphrase is an authentic, all right. He is a fan of the Saskatchewan Prairie Fire, which I actually had to look this up. They are uh, a Canadian rugby team. Mm. Um, Davis once uh, competed in rhythmic gymnastics, and he also has a collection of the original Hardy Boys books. He is unable to make coffee, but is unwilling to tell anyone. When he was, when he was a baby, his mother left him to join a band. For a long time, he thought their cleaning lady was his mom. Um, in the episode named I Love Lucy, Davis reveals himself to be a member of the Korean nation. Uh, at the end of season five, Davis is said to be 46 years old, which would make uh, 1961 his birth year. He is also seen as a police officer in Dog River in 1986, which is the Grad 68 episode in season one, where they try to figure out who the hell would write Grad 68 on the water tower. When actually they're trying to write Grad 86. Um, he lost his sense of smell after being hit on the head as a child and regains it after falling from a ladder trying to rescue a cat from Leroy's tree. Davis is divorced, but at the end of the series, he eventually remarried. And last but not least, we have Officer Karen Pelly. Constable Karen Pelly is Dog River's ambitious, sometimes neurotic junior police officer. 
Before becoming a police officer, she ranked fifth in Canada in the sports of static apnea with a personal best of more than six minutes. Now, do you know what static apnea is? I had to look this up. No, I don't. So static apnea is uh, the ability to breathe underwater without any um, breathing apparatuses. That That's possible? It's possible. And it, yeah, it actually is a thing. I'd forgotten that it was a thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, was it an episode of King of Kids of the Hall years ago to a skit on it as well? Uh, Kids in the Hall is kind of like our... Um, what's the bill? It's kind of like our Pell Trackers in a way. Just oh. not... Not as famous. Nowhere near as famous. Uh, they're still a big deal of popular culture in Canada, but they're not on the level of the Trail Packer, the, the Pale Riders. The Pale, pale Riders. You mean you mean they're uh, they're stage people or they just TV? So they started off as a stage troupe. Uh, Mike Myers actually of Austin Powers fame actually did some stuff early in their career, and then they eventually got a TV variety, a TV uh, series, kind of like an um an SNL, which was all a bunch of skits and stuff like that. So they are a famous comedy troupe. There's I wouldn't put them on. The only reason I use the, the pale trackers is because that's the best comparison I can use to something you'd know. Okay. Um, like I said, they're nowhere near on the cultural level, but they're still culturally significant here. All right. Um, all right. Before becoming um, she's a very good cook, but does not like to bring it up for fear it will stereotype her. She does not want to admit that she does not know how to ride a bike. She is also at least 10 years younger than most of the other characters, turning 30 in the sixth season. Karen possesses a variety of skills, including cooking, martial arts, drumming, drawing, and table hockey. But when she wins a raffle in the sixth season, she says it's the first time she ever won anything. <laughs> she tends to take her police position very seriously, unlike her partner Davis, and treats even the most minor problem officially. One occasion, when she mentions to Davis that she feels she has a good lead on a cold case, he stares at her dumbfounded and asks, why? Karen frequently becomes annoyed with Davis's willingness to obey the mayor in everything in Ben rules. They differ greatly on their views of what a police officer should portray. On one occasion, Karen states that a police officer should be respected by the community, to which Davis casually replies, who said that? Um, many episodes see them engaged in petty disputes and going to great lengths to one-up each other. Despite their differences, Karen and Davis get along well, although they don't spend much time together outside of work. In the episode, Hook, Lund, and Sinker, Karen goes fishing with Hank and is seduced by his quote-unquote sexy fish talk. Yeah, very weird episode. Uh, at the end of the series, she falls in love and marries. In Corner Gas, the movie, Karen's husband is said to be a soldier stationed off the Mediterranean coast, and they're expecting their first child. Now, that was done because the actress playing her, Tara Spencer Nairn, was actually pregnant when they filmed the movie. Um, all right, so now a little bit about the town. Uh, first up, we've got the Howler which is the town newspaper. The town has its own newspaper, the Dog River Howler, usually just called the Howler, to which almost everyone has contributed at one point or another. His head, its headlines are usually rife with inaccurate, sensationalist reporting. An example of exaggeration can be seen in Hero Sandwich, in which a proposal to install traffic lights... Uh, oh, actually, I have that one. In which a proposal to install traffic lights at a four-way intersection prompts the headline... Crosswalk hell, mayor insane. Another example occurs, mentioned in the same episode, where coyotes wander into town to eat cats, prompting the incorrectly spelled headline, cattle killed by werewolves. An example of simply untrue reporting can be seen in the very first episode in which a headline reads, Moose Jaw gets an NBA franchise. And at an unseen time, they declared that Canada was apparently at war with Switzerland. The paper is also rife right. with spellings. Yep. For example, in the third season, that Hank is, that Hank is psychic. Psychic spelled wrong. They spelled huh. it P Y C I C. <laughs> this story was contunied on page 30. Or in the fourth season, that cop nab, nabs barely thief. After Karen mentions that the person who was caught was a barely a thief for having stolen a green truck. Now, to show you two other examples of their headlines, we have this one. Town fights Dirty Ho with Giant Donut. Okay. And New Tree attracts Boozy Element. <laughs> next up, we have the Woolerton rivalry. The rest of these next two things I don't have any pictures for. Um, the residents of Dog River have a pathological dislike of the residents of Woolerton, a neighboring town 
to the point that is spit on the ground whenever the rival town is mentioned. Exactly. So whenever somebody says Wolverton in the series, anyone in the vicinity will do that. Stop and spit on the floor. Okay. Yeah, like literally, in the town is said. No joke. Uh, they are so used to doing it so that they sometimes do not realize it when they spit. Dog River's local uh, newspaper, The Howler, will even print spit after printing the word Wollerton. <laughs> <laughs> However, the people of Wollerton may not hate Dog River as seen in the fourth season's finale. However, this was only part of Hank's fantasy sequence and may not accurately reflect Wollerton's actual sentiment towards Dog River. The reason for this apathy was never explained. Publicity for the second season indicated that the season finale would reveal the reason for the spitting. However, the episode as broadcast did not actually do so. This practice of looking down on neighboring towns is common in many prairie communities, primarily those in Saskatchewan and Alberta, such as Tisdale, Melfort, and Wilcox. Woolerton is shown, is shown first on screen in Corner Gas, the movie. As for the reason Dog residents, River residents hate it so much, Wharton is a creepy, eerily Stepford Wise-ish town where everyone is excessively nice and clean cut, which tends to scare any visitors from Dog River. I can see why why that would set some people on edge. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it's not going to come up. I thought it was going to come up in my character descriptions, but the reason why oh, there was a picture from one episode I wanted to bring up, and it was this one. They actually created a, a, the town out of Legos. And at one <laughs> and at one point, there's I think it's a fantasy sequence. Brent plays Godzilla. So. Sure, why not? Yeah. All right, and the final thing about the t about the town uh, is the band Thunderface. <laughs> Thunderface is an in-universe fictional band that was formed in the mid '80s by lead singer Hank Yarbo, lead guitarist Brent Leroy, and bass player Wanda Dollar. In 2005, the band was expanded to include drummer Karen Pelly, the most competent musician of the group. Thunderface has suffered from relative anonymity due to confusion with their name, as well as the fact that they have had only one gig since 1986. They have been referred to as Rumblepuss, Thunderbread, Thunderchunks, and Wonderface, among other names. Their sound is described as similar to, quote, a small animal caught in some kind of machinery, and their sole gig since 86 was booked due to the humorous nature of their poor performance. Along with their gig in 86, they seem to have done some school performances considering they blew the principal's eyebrows off. The only song they have been heard to play is Capital Cash by Fax Exit, which is a band that Brent Butt played guitar in before he got into comedy. Okay. Now, like I said, this show lasted for five years, but it was such a Canadian phenomenon that we actually had quite a few guest, uh, uh, guest actors on there. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of them because a lot of them they're not going to know, but basically they got two sitting Canadian prime ministers. They got local um, TV celebrities. They got ho hockey, current hockey players. They got retired hockey players. One of them, one of them Brent was constantly cursing him. And then they, they cut to Daryl Settler and is like, what the hell? That's the second time this week. I feel I've been cursed. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've got four rock players. Kiefer Sutherland actually did an, uh, appeared in an episode at the end because he is a well-known Canadian. So did his mom, Shirley Douglas, who is also, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she is a Canadian actress as well. And her father founded the National Democratic Party, the NDP, which is responsible for health care in, this, in uh, Canada. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so the series ended after five years because they wanted to go out on top. However, they were one of the first to actually do Kickstarter, and thus, oh, God, why did I forget the, the year of the movie? Uh, I think it's something. 2014, they actually did a Kickstarter and released Corner Gas, the movie. Uh, it was didn't go out in theaters long, but basically it takes place five years, same amount of time after the series ended, five years after the show. Um, the town's going down, and it's actually revealed that uh, Lacey and Brent have been dating for three years. I'm not going to go much into it, because it actually has been a while since I've seen the movie. But I do want to say this. If you look really closely on the left-hand co left column, you'll see my name in the credits of the movie. There, Yep, there I see it. Yep. And because I did that, I got a special edition of the movie with a limited edition Kickstarter case. Cool. And I got a, a bumper sticker, which is somewhere in the apartment, that says, I'm pumped. And I also got the matching Kickstarter t-shirt that also says, I'm pumped. Oh. I've never worn this shirt because by the time I got it, I had gotten fat. All the more reason to go on a diet. No. And then, or alternatively, just, you know, frame the t-shirt on your wall. Nah, it's, it stays neatly folded in my, uh, in my nightstand. 
Um, and then in you even, you even get to look at it. I pull it out every once in a while. All right. um, and then in 2018, I uh, Brent Butt decided to bring Corny Guys back, but this time in the form of an animated TV show. Um, like I said before, all the all the same actors have uh, returned, except for unfortunately, except for the mother. For the mother. So they have uh, currently cast her. I've actually never seen an episode of the animated series that is going to change on this current rewatch. Um, yeah, and that's actually what that's on the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Welcome to Dog River. Cool. Um, that's actually all I have because, like I said, it's not a long show. It's a show about nothing. There's no major season long threads like we're used to in sitcoms. It just it goes episode to episode. That's it. And that's the best way to have a TV show. Just yeah, tell good stories individually. Yep. And if you're in Canada and you want to watch the show, because it's been a while, you've never seen it. It is currently on Crave. I believe it's on HBO Max in the states. I'm not 100 sure. Two um, things I don't have here. Yeah. But definitely, I highly do recommend watching the series because, like I said, it's five seasons, uh, 20, 22 minutes an episode. Very quick watch. The episode, this, the humor is not overly sophisticated. Um, it's a very, very great show. And like I said, it is a major part of a uh, Canadian television here. So, um, yeah. Any questions? I thought you were going to just, just dis discuss individual episodes that you like or something like that. Well, I, I, I was thinking about it, but like I, like I said, before we started, I started my rewatch a little late. So I've only gone through one season so far. Um, but yeah. How about just uh, your overall thoughts on season one? Okay, so my, yeah, my, my it's one of those shows like you know when you're watching shows and you're like, okay, so the characters aren't quite there yet. Takes that's not the case with this. All the characters are there from they, the they hit it off from the start. Exactly. Like there may be a few like little plot holes uh, about like maybe something was said about a character or so that they might forget. That's standard. But for the most part, the characters' personalities are all all there right from the beginning. Like if you could basically look at a first episode, you could look at the last episode, not much has changed. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh yeah, very much so. And then, of course, season two is when you can start to see that the budget got a little bit bigger and uh, they started venturing out more. Like, in the first season, everything was primarily in Dog River, but in the final episode, they went to the Grey Cup, which was in the city. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's all very localized. Um, yeah, and for a while there, after the show was over, the sets were still standing and they actually used to host tours. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, a couple years ago, they finally tore down the set, which is unfortunate because I would have loved to have seen it. And I actually know people have been, been seen it and stuff. So and you've never been there, been there yourself. Though. I've never been there myself. No, because I've only been to Saskatchewan once and that was 23 years ago. So before the show was a thing. Way before the show was a thing. 23. That's yet yeah, that 2000. Uh, 2001. I, it was just before my 14th birthday. Cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I really, so one of the things I actually tried to look this up yesterday. So Brent has this shirt. You can't buy it anymore. I really wanted it for years. For years, you're able to buy it when the sh original show was running online. But And you haven't gone and bought, and bought it. They don't make while, them. What? They don't make them anymore. <laughs> No, but you haven't gone and buy it while it was. You know, I had it. thought about it, but at the time, I didn't have a credit card. And I didn't ever. I never really thought that you know there would be a time where I couldn't get it. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, you, you, you don't really think about all these things at the time. Okay, yeah. so the, so example of the guest stars. You know, you know the show. Whose line is it anyway? I think I might explain it to me. Whose line is it anyway? Is the improv game with Drew Carey? I think I know the Israeli version of it. Okay. So one of the main guys on that show is named Colin Mockery. He is from Canada. And there's an episode in the first season that is called um it's called Comedy Night. And they make a they make a joke, uh, the fact that Colin Mockery appears in almost every Canadian show. And just as he says that, Colin Mockery walks behind as a character named Dave. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, there's an episode in the first season where it involves around the um, hockey game between Dog River and another town, and they actually brought in sports casters from TSN, which is our major sports channel here, to do coverage in a dream. Um, let's see. Uh, what other shows? Um, like I said. Really hard to describe the show without seeing it because there's not a lot going on, which is funny because that is the name of that is the name of the song that plays over the end credits. Not a lot going on. 
Um, they, nothing. They've tried the Tragically Hip, which is a famous Canadian band here. They had them appear in an episode in the second season. Uh, they also had the world's famous Snowbirds, which is um, which is a uh, blah, 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 which is uh, aer military aer aerobatics flight demonstration team of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Um, they have had uh, Ben Mulroney, who Ben Mulroney is the son of uh, former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, and at that time was kind of like an equivalent of an MTV host. Um, they, uh, like I said, they had uh, Canadian sitting Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin, and then they had Stephen Harper, his successor, on. Um, <sighs> trying to find names here that you might have heard, but you have to be Canadian to to know these names. Uh, there was an episode. Yeah, yeah, weird. They had an, a, a, an episode where they had Adrian Clarkson, who is a Can Hong Kong born Canadian journalist who was the Governor General of Canada from 99 to 2005. So they've had Governor Generals. They had Mike Holmes, who is um, known for uh, uh, this Canadian TV show that, uh, called Homes on Houses, where he rebuilds homes. Um, so he was in there. Uh, let's see, other ones. Like I said, Stephen Harper. Um, oh, yeah. You ever heard of Dog the Bounty Hunter? Yes, I've seen him on Masked Singer. Yep, him and his, uh, him and his uh, late wife, Beth, actually appeared in a season five episode back when they were, when they were, uh, when they were at the height of their popularity. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. But he was just so popular at the time, then why not? Um, they've also had Mike Blue Blay on episodes. They have had um, Gordon Pinsent, who was a great Canadian actor who just unfortunately passed away earlier this year. Um, what's the best way to, who was the best actor to compare him to? Because he's one of those actors, like he, he turned up in everything. Oh, and he was also the voice of Babar. Go figure. Oh. So that, oh, yeah. Oh. Babar, yes. He appeared in an episode. Um, like I said, Michael Bublé. Um, but yeah, no, the the final the final episode is basically Brent's mysterious uh, disappearance as every Wednesday night and have the whole town talking. When it is discovered that he has been pursuing a lifelong dream that threatens to take him out of Dog River, everyone is forced to cope with the news. That's basically all it is. It's just typical Canadian life. Nope. In other words, Canadians are weird. Very much so. It's not it, like if you look at this and then you look like an American sitcom, you're like, hmm. Because <laughs> there's no live studio audience, there's no laugh tracks. It's all built on wit, wit and pithiness. <laughs> all right. Well, that's basically all I can talk about. Corner gas. Like I said, go out and watch it. It is a quick watch. Highly worth it. it is it is comedy that doesn't make you think. It's even better if you're Canadian and you get most of it. And if you're not, you suck. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say that though. All right, fifty. What is your topic for next week? So some of you may have noticed this right here. So when this episode goes live, the following day is uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Israeli, uh, um, New Year's. And uh, well, we're recording this on uh, the third of September. Full disclosure for people uh, watching. You know, and you know what that means. You know what the beginning of September means? Yeah, my birthday's coming up. Aside from that? Uh, not necessarily, when it comes to your side of the world. <laughs> it's the end of summer vacation. And you know what that means? Uh, everyone's going back to school next week, just like us over here. Yeah. Except we, we, uh, we started school today. But also... The holiday season is starting up back up. Because, you know, right. we Jews have a thousand holidays. Yep, every you time to celebrate tried, everything. Yeah, every time someone tried to kill us, we made a holiday out of it. So now it's time for us to celebrate the holiday that we celebrate for not dying a full year. The New Year's. So, Rush. yeah, we've got no less than three major holidays this month alone. Jesus. Yeah, so I'm going to... Just focus on all three of them because an individual episode for each just isn't really enough to talk about. So I'm just going to focus on all three of them for my episode, and that's going to be my episode for next week. Right on. It's definitely going to be looking forward because your your holidays are wild. Tell Go me ahead. about it. Celebrate everything. 
So celebrate not dying. Yeah. So, hey, Sora, happy not dying day. As to you as well, 50, happy to non dying day. All right. So just before we leave, I'm going to give you the synopsis of the movie so you can have an idea of what it is because I didn't think to look at the back of the case. Um, Brent and the gang discover that the town's finances have been badly mismanaged, leaving the town folk with little choice but to pack up and leave. As the locals make one last rally to save their village as they know it, the crusading cast discover a devious plan that may change life for Dog Riverites forever. Basically, got to save the town. Yeah, got to save the town. Yeah. All right, so 50, you want to insert your plugs first? Sure, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Freaky Shades of the Geek. I do weekly reviews of every single Doctor Who uh, episode from 1963 all the way to 2022, assuming, of course, the BBC doesn't block it. So by the time you watch it, we might watch this episode. Hopefully the dispute will help, and you can see the last one I, I uploaded earlier in the week. In the meantime, you can also find me every Thursday on this show, with a form of flags, and every Monday on Greatest Show in the Galaxy talking about Another show, but, you know, uh, better than uh, any other show because it's the greatest show in the galaxy. All right. And as for myself, you can find me on my personal Instagram and Twitter at soda underscore the underscore saxman. You can find me on Show of the 50 over here on this channel. You can also find me on the So Dagan Wrestling Network where just last week we did a live watch along of what is already being considered the biggest wrestling pay-per-view event in history, all in from Wembley Stadium in London, England. So definitely check that out. Um, and for other musings and what have you that happens throughout the, the world of wrestling. So on behalf of myself and 50, oh, I actually almost forgot that. Those guys, I'll let you do that, 50. Oh, me? Okay, so... No, when... you're, you're the one that does it better than me, because I, I you remember. I usually do. So, in, yeah, in addition to uh, me, uh, this channel, and Sodic and Wrestling, which Soda just mentioned, we also have all the other channels uh, from the wider Benverse at large, like Something to Talk About, Galaxy Geeks, Multiverse of Geekdom, Movie Lovers Unite, Midnight Night Cinema, A Town Reviews, and In the Front Row, which is still not pictured on this thumbnail. So, uh, yeah. Well, all right then. So, I'm going to go back to Dog River. 50 is going to go back to doing whenever he is. Uh, and we will see you all next week on Fun with Flags. And of course, of course, let's not forget we are doing this for this guy. This guy, this guy uh, right here brought us uh, both together. And the reason we're still doing this still to this day. So, eight months already. Right yeah. Oh, always remember to let your geek flag fly. That's all we're asking. Yeah. And for for um, my fellow Jews in the world, Shana Tova. And for uh, my fellow non-Jews in the world, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. There we go.